The Constitutional Review Committee was tasked with reviewing Section 25 of the Constitution to make it possible for the state to expropriate land in the public interest without compensation. The FW de Klerk Foundation fears, though, that amending the Constitution in this way would lead to what they are calling political instability. They believe that Section 25 has not been properly utilized and without changes, it can in fact speed up the process. We're joined now from Cape Town by the CEO of the FW de Klerk Foundation, Professor Tians Ilov. Good evening to you and thank you for talking to us this evening. You've written, of course, as the foundation about how this process, whenever it shall come to fruition, uh, could have negative political implications. You've uh, also said there might even be instability. What do you mean? Well, you know, at the moment already, we see calls just now in the news bulletin calls to occupy land. Um, at the moment, land must, can, can only be taken with just an equitable compensation, and already there are calls to take it, and already there are actions to occupy the land. Think of what will happen if tomorrow or next week uh, Parliament has decided to change the Constitution, and it is changed, uh, what people will do. And we believe that people will then willy-nilly start occupying land, there will be pushback against that from landowners and we could see not only political instability but anarchy and, and even bloodshed. So we think it's a very serious situation and therefore it's not something that should be done lightly. What's your response to people who would say, again, this is just fear-mongering? I mean, we're not a parliamentary democracy. Whatever laws a parliament has to put uh, as legislation, they have to stand up to constitutional muster. The president has repeatedly made assurances that it is going to be done within the confines of the law, within the framework of the constitution, and that's how it's going to be. And what you're saying is just going to cause panic that, in fact, it, isn't, it is precisely because of what people like you are saying that's what's going to cause the instability. Well, the fact is that um, the, the whole process to change the constitution um, is, is to allow expropriation without compensation. It's, just, it's not just a, a technical change to section 25. And we are warning against the change to allow expropriation with compens without compensation because we believe that will bring the anarchy. We are not against, and our, our uh, submission is in two parts. The first part shows the political, the economic, and the legal implications of a change that would allow EWC. Uh, but the second part, we make specific concrete proposals on what to do to speed up the process of extending property rights to all South Africans and increase land reform. And, and the point is, so it's not just fear-mongering, it's saying, don't do this, and, and we're not alone in this. I mean, the, the parliamentary committee under the leadership of uh, former President uh, Motlante, uh, the so-called high-level panel report, came to exactly the same conclusion. A parliamentary report by, by uh, South Africans that are not fearmongers said, do not change Section 25. You don't need to do it and you don't have to do it. Uh, we are saying just exactly the same. We say don't do it, don't change it. Rather follow a process of leaving it as it is, getting a regulatory framework because, strangely enough, and this is what the Motlante report is saying, since 1994, we've never had an act that regulated land reform. Land reform is just a program in a department, and therefore there is no transparency. Uh, the Motlante report actually pointed out that there are three reasons why the land reform program has failed. The first one is that there's no regulatory framework. There's no legislative framework. Secondly is the incapacity uh, of government civil servants and corruption, and thirdly, the political will of, of, of this government. So the problem is not with Section 25. The problem is not with uh, South Africans saying we also want land reform, all of us. The problem is what the Motlante report is saying, and I'm afraid that if we change the, the Section 25 to allow EWC, it will have not only negative political consequences, but also economic consequences. Let me, let me point out that both the parliamentary motion and the ANC resolution gave four conditions under which EWC should happen. The first is it shouldn't harm agricultural production, it shouldn't harm food security, it shouldn't harm any sector of the economy, and it shouldn't harm any investment in the economy. Now, Deputy Minister Jeremy Cronin from Public Works said in a public, at a, on a public platform 
that that's like fitting a square peg into a round hole. It's not possible to have EWC and not do all those things. So economically, it's as disastrous. And then obviously legally, the problem is that if you change uh, Section 25 and took away the just and equitable, it's against the rule of law. It's against the whole spirit of the rest of the Constitution, and it's also against the national accord that we as a country formed. So the Foundation's view is not that there shouldn't be land reform. We say there must be land reform. We say that the state has not fulfilled its mandate in terms of Section 25. But we say that shouldn't be done by allowing Prof. expropriation without compensation. Prof, I'm going we to say have to come in done here. By putting, having a proper land audit. I'm going to have to come yes. in here and, and ask this question because you've been speaking for a while now. Uh, there are many who would suggest that uh, whilst, uh, of course, the, the, the review process you speak about, uh, the parliamentary process you speak about, led by former President Mutlante, does acknowledge uh, that there were failures to implement policy, but it doesn't say that uh, there can't be redress. Many would argue that if we leave uh, the old apartheid patterns of ownership in South Africa, that's what's going to lead to anarchy uh, because we need to deal with the imbalances of the past, the injustices of the past. We can't simply wish them away. No problem. We agree totally. The point is how to do it. And for the last 24 years, it hasn't been done properly. Now we say do it properly. And, and one of the things we propose is, apart from the legislative framework, we must have a proper land order because we don't, we don't have the maths. We don't know who owns what really. We've had two very pitiful uh, 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 reports by the department uh, uh, in question. And thirdly, we say, we, because we have incapacity in the departments to, f to implement this program, or will implement the legislation, form what we call a special purpose vehicle. Form an agency, like a, the, German had a, the Germans had a development agency after the Second World War. Form that agency and give them a task to fulfill land reform, to carry out land reform, to do what we haven't done in the last 24 years. So our submission is not about not doing it. Our submission yeah. is doing it without allowing expropriation, without compensation. When you use the word properly, I mean, properly might mean very different things to, very, uh, to different people. Uh, but there are those who are saying, yet again, uh, we're looking at a constitutional process that is underway. It's a constitutional process that has allowed you to make your, sub your submissions, to have your views heard. This isn't, uh, you know, a process without order, without, you know, with chaos, uh, but that you're stoking fears. I mean, what's your answer to people who want to know how is your position not unlike that, say, of AFRI Forum? Well, I don't really know what AFRI Forum's position is. Our position is don't allow expropriation without compensation, but do rapid and land reform that will address both agricultural land reform, urban land reform, and also rural or communal land reform. I don't know what they're saying. We're saying do both. Section 25 has two elements. It has an element of property rights, and then it has an element of land reform, where the state is given the mandate to effect land reform for all South Africans. And we support that fully. And we've even gone so far as to, in this, in this proposal, this submission, give examples of how we think it could be done. The free market basically has failed to deliver on land reform. I mean, we all know that the ANC-led government was not obliged to follow the willing buyer, willing seller model. Uh, you talk of not wanting Section 25 to be changed, but when it talks about what is just and equitable, it may well mean in some instances no compensation as things stand. Let me say about willing buyer, willing seller. When the, the parliamentary motion was tabled, it was said that willing buyer, willing seller is indirectly, it is in Section 25. Now, that's a fallacy. Willing buyer, willing seller was never government policy. It was a, a court rule, a process rule, where it said that if you had a willing buyer, willing seller, it's the easiest, then it doesn't need to come to court. It, is, it was made by, I think, administrative rule and decision bureaucracy. It was made the rule. But Section 25 makes market value only one of five issues that have to be taken into account to make sure that it's just an equitable. And we have no problem with that, that it may be that some pieces of land, because they're underutilized or, or, or not utilized at all, could be paid for by less than market value. To say that the private sector has failed, 
the private sector has never been involved in land reform in this with government. Government had its own land reform and it failed. agri SA, on the other hand, showed that commercial land reform, private sector land reform as you want it, has rendered more black farmers, successful black farmers, in black hands, farms in black hands, than the public process has done. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't uh, uh, compare private and, 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 and state. Rest, restitution, ret redistribution is a state function. The state should do that. One of the things that they must take into account with compensation to be uh, just and equitable is market value, but it's not the only. What do you say to criticism that, uh, for example, your foundation hasn't uh, sufficiently bought into the new dispensation, that you speak of constitutionalism, but you would take a dim view of constitutional processes that have yet to be finalized and that you are raising the alarm on something that no one can quite say uh, what his eventual outcome will be because there is still a process that is going to be run according to the Constitution. Why not wait and see? Well, the point is we were asked to give our views on Section 25. We've participated in this process. We've not, we've not made the end. We warned that if Section 25 is, is changed to allow expropriation without compensation, we think it could lead to political instability. And we th I think that the economic signals and the political signals are there. Already, even while we're still considering it, we've got land occupation happening. What, how more, much more would there be if it has changed, when people say, well, we don't need to wait for compensation to be paid to X and Y and Z landowners, we can just take over the land. We have as much right as any organization in the democratic association. So we're not disdainful. We fully uh, accepted the, and we work within and with the constitutional dispensation. And the fact that we made our submission is proof of that. Of course, well, as we leave the conversation, it's important to note uh, that uh, land uh, occupation uh, in terms of uh, people occupying vacant land is not government policy. I think it's important uh, to spell out that difference. Uh, that's, of course, uh, the CEO of the F.W. de Klerk Foundation on uh, talking to us uh, from our Cape Town studios. Uh, that is, uh, of, of course, uh, Professor Tiens Enoff. Thank you.